What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to Shooting the Shit Uncensored. You know who this is. It's the dad bod god, the bald, the beard, and the fucking beautiful Piers Austin. And tonight, we got a fun one for everybody, man. I'm telling you, we got the Philippine dream, Julio Garcia in the house from Southern Territory Wrestling over in Perth, WA, and I'm excited to have on the Philippine Dream. I've been seeing this guy pop up on social media all the time, man. Uh, you know, he's definitely an up-and-comer and someone I've really wanted to talk to for a little while, so I'm glad this has be, been able to be made possible. But before we go any further, you know I need to take a quick second, a quick pause for that cause to thank one of our sponsors, and that is Sleeves. Dot com. That's S-L-E-E-F-S, sleeves.com. If you or someone you know is an athlete, you need to go and check out sleeves.com. All of their products are absolutely amazing. They've got everything covered from all your athletic wear and gear. They've got armbands, compression pants, compression shorts, headbands, boots, mouth guards, and they've even got those dirty boxes that you know I'm always rocking. So, guys, go and get yourself some dirty boxes at sleeves.com. Use that promo code M. WA pod to get a 10% discount, baby, on your final purchase. Also, wherever you're finding us, I appreciate you for tuning in. If you're tuning in live or even post live, make sure you like, share, subscribe, leave us a comment, share with your friends, share with your neighbors, share with your cousins, your aunties, your uncles, your enemies, everyone. Just share it around. If you're listening on a podcast platform, please give us a five-star review. I appreciate it. It goes a long way. It helps us bring more amazing conversations with more amazing people to amazing people. So get to clicking, tap the links, and tap in, and we're going to get in to my conversation with the Philippine Dream, baby! <laughs> Philippine Dream, welcome to the shoot. Oh. The shoot What's going on, brother? Yeah, good, bro. How are you? Thank you for having me on the show. Hey, man, I'm good, bro. I'm excited. As I said in the intro, bro, I've been seeing you pop up on social media, bro. So, like, when we started having, like, uh, this conversation uh, that Shane from uh, uh, Southern Territory Wrestling put us in, in touch, bro, I was, like, kind of already, like, already had my eye on getting you on the show bro so i was oh, kind awesome. of excited to see you coming so yeah i'm you. excited i'm excited bro i'm excited to have a chat tonight be uh be good let's go yeah that's it man well look bro let's let's get into it bro because i have seen you you pop up bro i've seen you pop yeah. up here and there man but like like what's your deal bro like how old are you how long you been in the game what's, <laughs> so, what's the deal so I'm, I'm 29 so i turned 30 this year so the big dirty 30 this year um so today actually marks eight years since my first singles match. So yeah, so 2015 in uh, Valentine's Day, I had me my first singles match against um, Del Cano. Um, it was a match with uh, AAW to like gain gain a contract to the to the company, and um, yeah, so it's been eight years. Well, started started training in 2014 um, at the AAW Academy under the likes of you know Chris Target, you know someone that's traveled the world, you know it's the current. Um, Shwai champion at the moment for SHWA um, here in mm -hmm. Perth and um, Andrew Carter as well, who's trained at Lance Storm um, School in um, in Canada. So, yes, yeah, so I started in 2014, started around, I think it was November 2014, had my first call up in uh, in February. So, yeah. You're a seasoned vet, bro. Like, no, I don't, no, I don't, no, I don't call me that. Vet, don't call me that. No, you're come on, go get No way, bro. No way. There's heaps of people that's way better than me. <laughs> hey, man, eight years doing this, bro. You like, you must have learned a few tricks, though, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, there was that time during COVID, you know, where 
you know, we had that bit of a break. So, you know, I went from 2019, um, you know, well, actually when AAW was um, sold off to, you know, another promoter, you know, and then, um, and then, you know, COVID hit and stuff like that. So I was a bit of MIA in, um, for about a year and a half, but, you know, I'm, I'm back and thriving and want to, want to be better than ever. So yeah, it's good. And like, you know, as far as like, you know, wrestling, have you only sort of done a majority of your stuff in WA in Perth? Um, no. So I've actually traveled around Australia. So I've, I've wrestled in like Brisbane, Adelaide, Melbourne. I've also gone overseas. I've been back home in the Philippines back in 2019 with, you know, I went along with my brother, Marco. So my younger brother is um, forming my tag partner as well. Oh, um, nice. I went, yeah. So I went along with um, Chris Target, um, Andrew Carter and Killer as well. So I don't know if you heard of Killer. So he was part of AEW as well. And I've also done a tour in um, the US as well in 2015 through NWA. So it went, I think, about four or five weeks of touring oh, nice. with, with Chris Target and Andrew as well. And we've wrestled a few um, promotions there. So it was, uh, yeah, it was pretty good. So, like I said, it's been a hell of a ride in the eight years. Yeah, so, you know, and you know, and um, you know, exciting stuff coming ahead as well. I've just um, you know, recently um, ticked off that I'll be heading back to the Philippines at the end of March to wrestle for Filipino Pro Wrestling (FPW), and yeah, so yeah, how excited, are the fans over in the that. Philippines, bro? They, the are, they are insane, man. Honestly, they are insane. Like literally, like when I wrestled there, so I I went over there and tagged with my with my brother. And uh, we were in a three-way tag. And legit, man, like any little move that you did, it, the crowd would just like be up on its feet, man. Like I did like a little chop and they'll be like, oh my God, like it's huge. And then like they treat you like, literally they treat you like celebrities. Like, yeah, you know, even even the even the boys and girls at the back, you know, they thought we were like WWE material, you know? And and like, I was like, man, I'm just like, I'm just, I'm just like one of you, you know what I mean? Like, I, I remember like when I was, you know, calling the match with a couple of guys and one of the guys was so nervous, he wouldn't talk. And I said to him, I said, hey man, you're all right. He's like, oh man, I'm just nervous as fuck. And I was like, man, that's good. Like, I'm always nervous, bro. Like every match I have, like I had butterflies in my gut. I pace up and down. Like if you talk to the boys at the back, like SC Dub and like, I just pace up and down, like before my match. And I just like get in this, like in this funk and it just yeah some nerves like go through me and yeah like like i said the fans in the philippines insane so loud super super humble as well and the funny thing is as well like me me and my brother we went there as heels and we cut a promo before i match and we literally shat on the philippines like we shit on and, the philippines and were like you calling was, yourself the philippine dream at the time yeah well? man, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah i was a that's even dream. better that's even yeah, better I was a philippine dream you know we made comments like you know philippines is stuff poor man's mexico <laughs> like you know and then, we talk, and then we talked about like you know the you remember the basketball game australia versus philippines were like you know you, mm. you guys you know you guys fight like girls this is why we're gonna win rah rah and i said <laughs> i said i don't i don't call myself the philippine uh philippine dream to represent the philippines is because i wanted to get out of this stinkhole of a country and they were like cheering for us like we tried everything to get us to get them to boo us yeah and nothing all they did was cheer like they just loved it. How was the how was the promoter pissed? Like were they like? Oh. No man, like he was like, oh yeah, he loved it. And like even after the after our match, he came up to us, shook our hands, and he goes, "Bro, that was like that was an amazing match." And um, yeah, and he was he was super happy with it. The fans were happy with it. And you know, I don't like to brag, but we most likely probably had the best match of the night. <laughs> well, I was gonna say like, what, what's what what are the workers like over there? Like, what's the quality of the the wrestling that they get over they, in the Philippines. It's just like anywhere, man. Like you get your good ones and then you get your, well, I'm not going to say bad ones, but you get your average ones that are still learning. You know what I mean? Like, and, and me, like I'm, I'm still learning, bro. Like, you know, I think I had a bit of a stigma back in the day where I thought I was the best, you know, like going around. Like, I think, I think a lot of people had that, that stigma about themselves when they start wrestling, you think you're better than everyone. And then, you know, then you, you start to meet new people and you start to meet other wrestlers and you're like, no, nah, well, you know, maybe maybe i'm not on par on some people you know maybe i i have room for improvement and we always do and everyone does you know no matter you're in the game for one year to 20 years there's always room for, room for improvement so i said in the philippines yeah you get your get your, um you know your good ones and the ones that are like you know are thriving and and yeah. only going to get better as well so yeah and like do, do they get regular shows over there happening 
Um, so back when we went in 2019, obviously that was before COVID. So yeah. they were doing their monthly shows. Um, right now, um, obviously after COVID, I think they only just started um, starting shows this year. So I think they had a couple of shows last year. So FPW was um, formerly known as PWR, so Philippine Wrestling Revolution. I think they've just done a name change and new management change. So mm -hmm. now it's now it's FPW. Um, yeah, I know they've they've got a show on this weekend. Um, I know they had one or two shows last last year, but mm -hmm. COVID in the Philippines was a lot a lot harder over here in Australia. Like it was like the restrictions were held pretty bad over there. Like my like like all my cousins and everyone, and my aunties that live over there, you know, they said that COVID was pretty strict over there. And it, and I think it still is. Like I'm pretty sure, like correct me if I'm wrong, that like you still need to wear masks like inside in over in the Philippines where at least us were like free of masks and everything. So yeah, well, that, yeah. I, I kind of feel like that's the Australian way, right? Like, it just got to yeah. where it's like, yeah, fuck it. We live with it for two years. <laughs> we just, <laughs> we'll just go about our business. COVID's fake, bro. It's just the cold. I had COVID. Have you had COVID? Uh, yeah, I did. I didn't even yeah. know. Like, didn't even know I had it. Uh, so I, my symptoms came quicker than uh, – my symptoms went quicker than they came. So I was like uh, – like, I had, I had like, gastro a couple of weeks ago, and that was worse than COVID. <laughs> oh, bro. Yeah, that – that will smash you worse than anything. Yeah, though, man. Like, yeah. Yeah. That, so. used to be, that used years ago, that used to be my excuse. If I didn't want, if I wanted a day off work, oh, I just got a gastro bug, bro. Yeah. That was, the, like, that was the best. Then I had, then I had gastro and then it laid <laughs> me out for like a week and I'm like, fuck, I can't use that excuse anymore. No, it's, it's, it's good though, because like you can still sound normal on the phone, right? Yeah. You just normally exactly. just stand, you just like, normally I just stand in the toilet. So you just hear that echo. So people are like, oh yeah, like, you know, we don't know. Yeah. But uh yeah, man, look, I think it's uh it's interesting, man. Um, because like <clears throat> with everything that sort of happened, you know, with with COVID and things sort of coming back, now like I, I think the Philippines and a lot of countries like that became like took it really seriously. Like I know China, they literally fucking barred like people's windows and shit and like drop like care packages each day or every yeah, second man. day with, yeah, <laughs> with food and stuff like that's like yeah that's some crazy shit um yeah, man. but like as far as going over and you know traveling because you said you traveled with the nwa right in 2015 yes yeah so um aaw had an alliance with the nwa um with what andrew had an alliance because he was the promoter of aaw so yeah so we we um flew over to the US and, you know, we wrestled like promotions like, um, you know, NWA Texoma, um, we went over into, um, Tullahoma, Tennessee. Um, I'm pretty sure it was SWF pretty sure, but yeah, we, we wrestled a few, few places over there and it, yeah, it was good, good fun. And like the people there were, were different and it's just crazy how like wrestling over there is like so, so different over here in, in Australia. Like I feel you know, when I'm talking to mates about wrestling, you know, they're always like, oh, just, you know, the fake stuff. It's like, mm. but over in America, like wrestling's huge. You know what I mean? Like this, the yeah. second you talk about wrestling, they just like glued onto you. Or oh, it could have been my well, I Aussie think, accent. I think, that, I think that's, I think that's changed now though. Right. Because it's like in Australia, like when I, I started at my job, like uh, about a year ago and like word got around oh yeah pierce does a wrestling podcast and and, and works on wrestling shows and then people yeah. came up and they start talking having conversations oh man do you work in like pro wrestling and oh yeah yeah podcast and i'm on i work yeah yeah yeah. Doing yeah this this or whatever and they're like oh man that's so cool whereas like probably like 20 years ago it would yeah. be like a different story you know what i mean but like i think now wrestling has become so mainstream and so popular that it's like it's just it's something that exists like there's always going to be people that fucking hate it and, and yeah yeah it. so it's like it's like anything really it's like yeah that's man, oh that's right yeah that's shit. right because you know i went i went through school and um you know i actually went probably about four or five years where i didn't watch wrestling at all so around like it was around the year 10 year 11 mark you know i was always mm. all, always talking about wrestling like to mates and stuff like that. and then none of them really got into it as much as me like i had a few friends that was really into it but i think i felt like oh if i kept talking about wrestling because you know, back then people always just thought, oh, you know, trampoline, fake, you know, mm. you know, acting and stuff. So I just thought if I just stopped talking about wrestling and stopped watching about wrestling, or maybe like I just fit in more. Do you know what I mean? So I kind of just stopped 
wrestling and I stopped watching wrestling and stuff. Like I wasn't really into it. So I probably had a break from like four or five years where I didn't watch anything at all. Mm. And then like I got back into it from probably when I was around like 18, 19. Yeah. Started watching wrestling again now and then. And then, yeah, I remember I remember like one, once I was like around 18, 19, I was watching wrestling again. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? I remember like seeing like, you know, there was a ladder match between Christian, uh, Christian and like Alberto Del Rio for the World Heavyweight Championship. I think it was like um, an edge was on the side or something like that. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. When did this happen? Like, who the fuck's Alberto Del Rio? I had no idea who he was. But yeah, and then obviously like my passion life for wrestling's like grown, but yeah. But yeah, that's I think that's what it was like back in the day. You know, a lot of people like the second you see you talk about wrestling, you know, oh Hulk Hogan or Andre the Giant, you know, all the fake yeah, stuff, yeah. The acting. Killer you know? Kowalski, depending yeah, on the yeah, yeah. Born, like yeah. Yeah, bro, yeah. But uh, but I think that, that that's the thing. Everyone like <clears throat> can say, Oh yeah, I know like from around the world, right? People can say pro wrestling and they can tell you at least one wrestler's name. Whereas, like, oh, yeah. take American baseball, for example, right? If you go and ask, like, 50 random people around Sydney or Perth who plays for the New York Yankees, you may get, like, five people out of 50 who may know a name or a yeah. past player, right? Don't, don't ask me that question because I wouldn't have any idea. <laughs> oh, bro, neither would I. <laughs> uh, Guido says, I've encountered more people who are into wrestling here than I did in the States. That's surprising. Yeah. But uh did you see uh this thing on social media the other day about that that fed in South Australia? Um no, t- talk more about it. Um so apparently this this fan posted this um screenshot of like a a direct message he got from the promoter because apparently this fan went on the page this promotion has like uh, what do they call it? Like they've postponed show after, like they've never had a show. They just keep postponing shows. And this fan allegedly well, said he commented saying, oh yeah, what's going on? Like, what's going on? You keep postponing I shows. Think, are you ever going to have a I show? I think I know. I think you, I know what you, who you're talking about. So they've actually yeah. hit me up. Really? Um, this, this company in, um, in South Australia they actually hit me up to fly me over to wrestle for one of their shows. And at first I was a bit skeptical of like, <laughs> who, yeah. And I just, I don't know. It just, like not sh- not shitting on any of the guys, but it did look a bit weird. Like, I, and then I was looking through their page, and is this the one that like they do training out in the park? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Like I said, I'm not shitting on anyone. I don't want to shit on. Bro, like I, I'm like, not, I'm not shitting on it either, bro. No, no, no. Like, nah, nah, like, like, like the, the message this guy sent a fucking fan. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't end up seeing that, but it's probably, it's probably taken off. I'm guessing, hey. Bro, he's he, this guy was called like homophobic slurs, saying I'm gonna fucking really? track you down, I'm gonna fucking fuck you Jesus. up. And, yeah, bro. Like, oh, and I'm hey. seeing this. I'm like, bro, if you're a promotion and you haven't even had your show, why? And someone's putting negative shit. Try and win them over. Hey, here's some tips, yeah, yeah, bro. Man. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's yeah. For a promoter to do that, that's a bit. That's very unprofessional. Let's let's be real. Oh, but I'm pretty bro. sure like, like they post they've postponed a couple of shows. I'm pretty sure though. Yeah, but I don't think yeah. anyone reputable would want to work for them. Would like, would you yeah. go and work for them now, knowing like that? Uh, probably not. I actually hit up someone over in Adelaide, and I said, "Hey, bro, like, what's this? What's this company about?" And he just said, "Stay the fuck away from him." Yeah. So, yeah, well, yeah. dude, like, apparently they even stole a wrestler's gimmick. Okay. Well, but, like, it speaks volumes, doesn't it? <laughs> well, exactly Maybe. right. So it's. It's wild, bro. But like, that's it's funny because like you hear all the like the crazy wild stories of the history of professional wrestling, and you, like you think in twenty twenty three, like that shit has completely like gone off the table. But like, yeah, yeah, you, you still hear this shit. Like it's like oh, over in the US with like you know IWA Mid South for an indie over there, like Ian Rotten, you know, not paying workers and you know stealing money from fans, and he's been doing it for twenty years, and people are still surprised. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah, think I it's just yeah, I don't know about this. Uh I don't know. I I've I did see something. I know they made a post, I think it was either today or yesterday or something like that. I yeah, I don't I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things, man. It's yeah, uh it is. yeah, it is. I'm happy I'm happy to sit on the sidelines and eat my popcorn and just see this shit fucking explode. <laughs> that's it, bro. that's it. As long as you know, and at the end of the day, if they want to like and, and you know me, I'll I'll take like I'll take any booking kind of thing uh, within reason. You know what I mean? And mm. if they were going to, you know, if they wanted to book me and, you know, cover my flights or whatever, then yeah. 
Well, that's it, man. I mean, at the end of the day, you're a worker, right? So, like, that's it. <laughs> you, you want to go and work and you know get yeah, your own and, time in and you know, and and the best the best thing to you know to get your name out there is exposure, right? So you know, and mm. yeah, the, at um you know this point in my career as well, I'm trying to get as much exposure as I can get. So you know, any any sort of booking, you know, like I said, within reason. Right? Yeah. So any any promoters oh. watching, hit me up. That's it, man. That's it. There's a lot of good moral, you know, promoters out there, man. But WA, man, like there's I, I was surprised like how like much wrestling is actually in WA. Like, you know, what I mean, because there's you know, uh there's Mana's promotion. Um, yeah, so you got the NHPW, you got EPW, you got um Schwa, and you got SCW, and I believe there is one in Darwin. Really? Which I think, oh, now I'm like thinking about history less. Is that just outside WA? <laughs> Darwin? I can't. But yeah, yeah I, don't I know. know that, I know there's a prom- I know there's a promotion in Darwin. I think it's called Top End Wrestling in yeah, Darwin. Right. I, I so yeah, but, it, but but I know, yeah, I know in Perth, yeah, there is, um, there's four, four companies active at the moment. So. And do you like, I like would you go and start working other promotions in Perth or is it because like is it so small that it, is it yeah, small uh, there that it's impossible to do that or so you know like I I recently just did a week camp at the EPW School of Pro Wrestling with um under Damien Slater and David Storm as well so that was oh. in that was their summer camp in in January um you know we had heaps of guys over from Adelaide we had guys like Joey Joey Ryan coming over um you know we had like um Ty Thayer, he came. He's, I'm pretty sure he's from PWA. We had like Sexy Sleth from, uh, Sexy Seth from QWA. We had Hayden as well. Um, oh, we had a few, few, few. Um, Anth Cava as well. Like they all came over and we trained for a week and we ended up having a show. Um, you know, um, on the on the Saturday, called um, Cabin Fever and yeah, it was it was good. How was it training with um, Damien Slater and um, man? Really good, man. It was it was really good. Like like I said, you know, like I've, I've still got you know room room to learn and room to improve as well. And you know, I learned so much off both of them, and they're both the most most humble guys as well. Um, you know, I took I took away a lot um, out of that week camp, and you know, I've walked out of there a better person and a, a bit, better performer as well. So it was it was good. Yeah, nice. And like, do you think like EPW would be a place that you'd want to go and train regularly at? Uh, you know, I, I try, I try and make it down there for training because that's pretty much the only active place in Perth to to train at the moment. Oh, really? it's EP, EPW, or you do have NHPW, but we um we just won't worry about that. So yeah, so yeah, EPW is pretty much the only. Place. Let, let me uh, go back. Let me, let, let me go back. Let me go back. Like NHPW. <laughs> For some reason, I can never get a straight fucking answer from people. What with, with like what, what? What is it? Like, have they got two heads? Like, what, what's the issue with these guys? Uh, for what I know, man, like, um, you know, obviously, like speaking to a few people, you know, um, NHPW, like, if you start training with them, you're pretty much just exclusive to NHPW. So it was very hard for workers to expand and get exposure outside of nhpw um you know i I know a lot of guys in nhpw and and you know i'm not like i said i'm not um i don't hate anyone there but it's just more Mm. like i'm not i don't want to be exclusive to one promotion do you know what i mean like i'm an independent worker i want to try wrestle anywhere yeah so i know like like i said i've heard that at nhpw once you start training with them you're pretty much exclusive to them and it's very hard to get the all clear in wrestling outside of outside of nhpw and I know a couple of guys that have done that. Um, I don't know. There was some heat that happened there. That's probably the guys that um, those guys can explain to you about. Yeah, like sure. I said, I, I could be. I don't want to expand no, on no, it no, as no. I might I, as I might be wrong. But you no, know, no, what no, I mean? it, so was, in a, it, was, it was just it was just the point that I wanted to ask because it was just like, like <laughs> you know, what I mean, what what's the deal yeah. there? But like I understand that. Like if if part of their conditions is you're exclusive to them. Like, yeah, you know, I mean, like, I think as a wrestler, you've got to be able to go and work other people to get better, right? 100%. 100%, man. So, you know, and like, you know, and, 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 you know, I'll be, I'll be honest, like, I have hit them up like during COVID and, 
um, or just after COVID when wrestling scene started coming up before SCW um, started, you know, I hit, did hit him up for some training and stuff like that. And, you know, and I was looking into training at NHPW, but again, you know, I just wasn't, I didn't want to be exclusive to the one promotion, you know what I mean? And I didn't want to burn bridges if I started with them and be like, Hey, I want to expand. I want to go wrestle elsewhere and then, you know, like get heat. So my best, best option is to um, sort of just like train okay, with EPW. With, yeah. yeah. With, yeah. With EPW, they're, they're happy with anyone to wrestle anywhere. Mm-hmm. Do you know I mean? So, and, you know, and I try, and I try to train there as much as I can. I know I have, you know, um, I wouldn't say lazy, but you know, at the end of the day, with work, family, you know, I got three kids, I got a wife as well. They got to try and keep happy and so as well, you know. And <laughs> and I got to trek, I got to trek like an hour to to the EPW training, to, yeah. to the school, you know. And I try, I try and get there as, as much as I can. I know I haven't been there as much as I want to, but when I, whenever it's I get hard, the chance, it's hard, man. You you got three kids, yeah, you got work, you got family, bro. Yeah, like man. It. And you know, I work I work away as well, so I I, I do FIFO. So I don't oh, know if yeah. you heard of FIFO, so it's fly in, yeah. fly out. So, you know, I'm, I'm only home for six days at a time, mm. you know, and then, you know, you got to try and balance family, school, pick up, drop off, wrestling. Do you know what I mean? So like I said, I try my best. I try my best. So, yeah. Oh, that's it, man. But like with the fly in, fly out work, is there any opportunity for you to fly out? Like when you're working somewhere, can you do wrestling shows as well there? Nah, like, nah. So, the, yeah, yeah, nah. So, well, I mean, I'm like real like in the – Oh, just in bumfuck nowhere, really. Yeah. <laughs> like out in the mine sites, yeah, just out in the desert. So, like, the only place we got there is like Newman in WA, so, and there's no promotions there or anything like that. So, the main promotions are over here in Perth. So, I just try and wrestle when I'm home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and try and train as much as f- I can. How do you find like balancing, you know, family and and wrestling and and work and everything like that? I mean, like, does it get a bit much sometimes? It does, man. It, get, it gets a lot because at the end of the day, you know, family's always first. You know, my, my wife and kids will always come first and, you know, and then I'll come to wrestling, you know, and, and my wife is, you know, she supports me by really well, like as much as she can as well. Like, you know, with my with my wrestling, you know, I did meet my wife, um, you know, it, while while wrestling. So, you know, this is a funny story. I got to tell you this story. So yeah, yeah. when I, when I, so when I, how I met my wife, right? So I was doing like a, it was before an AEW show and I was doing a meet and greet and I signed away and my permanent marker like ran out. I was like, yeah. fuck, I need, I need a new permanent marker. So I was like, oh, has anyone got a permanent marker? And at the time, my wife was working at the door. She used to sell the tickets and she goes, oh, I've got one. Anyway, like as I look and she's like passing the marker, it's one of those, you know, those movies when like two people like yeah, lock yeah. eyes and like music play in the background and flowers and everything <laughs> like that. Yeah, yeah. so like i was like that with her and i was like oh, oh i was like oh yeah cheers and then like got the permanent marker and yeah and then you know i flicked her a message on uh on facebook and we we're chatting away for a little bit and then yeah and then one of the one of the shows um i had a, a steel cage match with james grace at aaw and i actually got knocked out so i actually got knocked out probably about seven minutes into the into the match and i had a you know we planned you know 20 25 minutes completely knocked out woke up came to didn't know where i was continued on the match um ended up getting rushed to hospital that night woke up in the morning and there was a message from her saying hey like hope you're okay um give me a message if you need anything and then yeah and then went on from there and the rest is history married got a house together three kids so i I think i'm doing something right (laughs) mate you definitely mate you're punching mate punching (laughs) but you know like And, and like, so she was in, like, was she training in the business or was she just working for the venue? Like what was, what was her? No, of- no. So she, she just did the, like the, the ticket sales. So she was just like working on the door and she just, you know, just let the people through, did the tickets and does all the front end sort of stuff, selling the chips and the drinks and stuff like that. So, yeah, I tried, I tried to get her into training. It'd be pretty yeah. cool. She wasn't having it. No, no, no. She's not too keen on it. <laughs> But like, you know, as far as yourself, man, like, you know, with wrestling, like, where do you want to take it? Man, I, I'm, like I said, I, I'm, I'm happy to, to take it pretty much like, well, what's that saying? You know, I'll go wherever the wind takes me kind of. So, you know, like, you know, always keep the dream alive of like trying to get to, you know, WWE. I know like, it, like it's 
there's somewhere inside of me and I know that it's probably too late as in, you know, I'm turning, turning 30 and stuff like that. And I, if I wanted to get into WWE, you know, I'd have to make the move over to America. That means moving my family and stuff like that, you know? And, but, um, like I said, man, like I'm, I'm, I'm happy what I'm doing at the moment. You know, I've wrestled a couple of big names last year. So I wrestled guys like Mikey Nichols. I just, um, had a match last year, in November against Carlito as well. WWE, former WWE superstar, nice. you know, and you know, I just, yeah, I'll just see where 2023 brings me. So quite pretty excited. How'd you find wrestling Carlito? Good, man. It was really good. So, you know, um, it was, it was pretty hard. Like it, it, it's a match that, you know, that I'll um, keep close to my heart, you know, cause you know, about a week, week and a half prior to my match with Carlito, unfortunately my sister passed away. Um, she passed away from a rare condition. You know, she was fighting her for about two, two and a half years. And, um, you know, the, we had the funeral the day before my match and, you know, and that Friday, that Friday when we had the funeral, I was picking up Carlito from the airport and dropping him to the hotel and, you know, and, and, um, you know, I had to leave the, you know, I left, left the wake, you know, around seven o'clock and I'm driving up and I was thinking, do I tell Carlito, you know, like, do I, do I mention about her or anything like that? And I was like, no, I won't, I won't say anything because, in my head, I was like, if I mention about my sister and like the headspace that I was in, I was afraid that he was going to be like, I don't want to wrestle you because you're not in the right headspace. You're going to hurt, you're going to hurt me or you're going to hurt yourself. So, you know, and the worst thing was, you know, like when I picked him up from the airport, we're in the car, we're driving away and he goes, Oh, so how was your day today? And I was like, fuck. (laughs) And I was like, yeah, man, like it was good. So I didn't say a single thing. I I never said anything to him until um, I actually hit a promo. I done a promo after our match. Um, after my match with Carlito, I did a promo about my sister, you know, and then when I went out the back, you know, he was like, oh, you never told me about your sister and, you know, and then we're having a chat about it. And I was like, yeah, well, I didn't want to tell you because I was scared that you were going to, you know, not wrestle me because I wasn't going to be in the right headspace. But he was like, no, nah, man, like, you know, we worked through it together. And yeah, so yeah, like I said, that match, we you know, I'll, I'll hold, hold very close to my heart as, you know, it's, um, you know, it was, it was for my sister and, you know, it was a, it was a pretty rough week and a half leading up to it. You know, there was, there was times where I was just like, God, I don't want to wrestle anymore. You know, like, um, you know, the day before my sister passed away, I said to her, I said, Katarina, like, you, you need to get better because you know, I've got a big match next week. You, you're going to come watch me, right? Because yeah, 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 I will. I will. And obviously, unfortunately, she wasn't able to, to come watch, but yeah, so yeah, sorry, to hear, man. That's that's, no, that's no, sorry, man. Yeah, that's, no, that's that's all right. You know, and 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 it's just you know, I like to tell the story because it is you know, we especially something that big that happened to me. You got you got to learn to move on. Do you know what I mean? It, you know, not not so like like you didn't care what just happened. You you know what I mean? You just got to sort of like move on with life. And, and it was something that my sister would have wanted to do, you know? And like, I remember, you know, my mom, my mom said to me, she goes, you know, your sister wouldn't want you to stop. You know what I mean? So, you know, she's in a better place now, you know, she's up there, up there with, um, with our dad, because my dad passed away back in 2013 as well. So, you know, and yeah, I think about her every day, think about her a lot and every match going forward, I'll think about her. So it'd be, and it'd be good, you know, going back home to the Philippines, because you know that's where she was born, you know. So that yeah. that'll be a very special match for me as well. So and you know her dream while she was sick was to go back home to the Philippines to see the family. Um, obviously she wasn't able to do that. So yeah, so it'll be a very special moment. Gone, gone. I think you make it even, the next time you go there over there even that much more special. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, it'd be it'd be it'd be good. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. And like, you know, as far as like, you know, your mom, you know, you mentioned her, like, has she been a big supporter of the wrestling over your career? Oh, she hates it, bro. (laughs) I can just, you know, every wrestler I speak to, bro, has the same response. (laughs) I remember, oh man, I remember I had a match. Who was against? It was a guy called JC Blade. had a match against JC Blade. And I told mom, I said, mom, come down, come watch me. It's all right. Like, you know, I won't get hurt or anything like that. It's all sweet. So she goes, all right, right, I'll come down. I think I was like three matches in. Anyway, I remember, so when she accepted that she was going to come in, I remember talking to this guy and I said, bro, fucking throw me into the steps, slap me across the face, do whatever you can. (laughs) Yeah, mom absolutely hated it. So she won't won't step back in. I'm pretty sure that was the only match she's ever watched. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, that's she, the thing. She hates it. Like, like, mums are like that, bro. Contact sports yeah, bro. And, and stuff like that. But mums don't want to see that. Yeah, bro. Yeah, I know. You know, they don't want to see their babies get hurt, right? 100%. Where, <laughs> where I think, like, it, it, it's interesting because it's like, I can remember as a kid, like, playing football, like, my mum coming to a football game was just, like, told, like, our coach told her, like, just don't come. Games. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. The coach yeah, has to tell yeah. you that, that's embarrassing, <laughs> bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, nah. She she hates it. Like, I like. Well, she has probably come. I think she's come to one one match after that. It was yeah during a tag match with me and my younger brother. But I think we like absolutely begged her to come along. And one of her one of her mates, uh, one of her good mates, actually, she's into like fully into wrestling as well. Oh yeah, which is like quite surprising. Yeah, so yeah, she wanted to come along and ask mum to go along with her. So. They, they came along, so yeah. But yeah, she hates it though. Hates it. <laughs> Most mothers do, man. Yeah, unless bro, they're yeah. in the, unless they're in the business, the mum, and then it's yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, I'd love to, yeah, like, oh, man. How good would it be just to do a spot with my mum? But <laughs> you know what? It's it's so like it's funny because like my none of my family has ever been into wrestling, and it's yeah. like I, I like they would look at me like talking about wrestling, like I have two heads, but I would be looking at them like they have two heads because I was like, why don't you like this? Like, <laughs> yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. So, all <laughs> me, both me, both my brothers, they like, they like wrestling. Our older brother, not so much. My younger brother, he likes his wrestling too. As that, yeah. and you know, he's, he's, it was only myself and him that got into the business. My older brother had no, he didn't have really any, how you call it, like, any thought of like getting into the business so yeah it's just me and my little brother that got into it yeah and like do you th do you see yourself getting like going and doing more traveling like going over to the states and you know like other parts of asia like japan or stuff like that or do you feel Hope. like yourself like where you are now is what you're doing hopefully hopefully man i think um you know i was having a chat to my wife you know and like i think as as the kids get a lot older so like, cause you know, we, we've got young kids, so we've got a six year old, a four year old and a seven month old, you know, they're still young, man. You know what I mean? Like, the same you know, age being, as being, mine. yeah, yeah. You know, like being away at work is, is hard enough for me, you know, and, mm. um, you know, the Philippines is going to be hard being away, but I think because I'm going to be with my family, it would be a lot easier. But I think, you know, if I'm going to do a tour over the States, you know, you're looking at trying to get like three, four weeks away. You know what I mean? And I think it's yeah, just going to be too much, too much, too much on the wife and stuff like that. And, you know, if I do, if I do more and more traveling, the, the longer I'm going to be, be away from the wife, I think the milkman might be knocking on the door. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it, man. Just make sure you've got one of those, uh, baby spy cams that are sitting in the <laughs> But make sure it's got a microphone. It's like, who is that guy? <laughs> yeah, no, nah, no. Nah. No, nah, nah, my wife's not like that. She won't feel like that. But you know, like it, yeah. it's yeah, it's it's you know, it would be hard on them. Not hard on my wife as well. You know, she's the backbone of this family. You know, she like I said, she supports my wrestling and you know, and you know, especially for her letting me do this podcast on Valentine's Day of all days. Hey you know man, I mean? say with my, you know what, bro? I forgot about Valentine's Day. Like I was talking to my <laughs> wife like today, at, at, like I was at work, and she's like, "Oh yeah, so what are we doing? Like, what are we doing for dinner?" And I'm like. Uh, what I'm doing a podcast with uh, Julio <laughs> yes. and I, she's like, Ah, yeah, yeah. oh, is he single? And I go, I, I no, I don't think so. I think he's married with kids. She's like, Well, you and him are gonna be talking to each other. I think <laughs> they're like, you, yeah. no, she is, I'm sure it's me. That's right. Well, it's done. only it's only what five thirty here, so I got plenty of time to take my wife out for dinner. <laughs> hey, that's well, that's it, man. WA time, bro. That's but it. um. You know, it, it's interesting, man, because it's like, I think, you know, by having a supportive partner, like it, it, it sounds like you have, man, it, it's like it makes your, you know, you being able to fulfill your dream even more, right? Yeah, man, 100%, 100% because I wouldn't be able to, do, to go traveling and do these sort of things without, without the, you know, her permission, I guess. <laughs> yeah, man. And, you know, uh, like, tell me, you know, like you're the Southern Territory champion, right? So um, Southern Southern Cross champion, Southern Cross, yeah, champion. Southern Cross champion, yeah. So I've been Southern Cross champion for I think over four hundred days now. So I won the belt. So I wrestled against Matt Hader, um, mm -hmm. October twenty twenty one, and a match uh, before that was like March twenty twenty. So you know I was away a year and a half, going up yeah. against Matt Hader. That's you know one of Adela Adelaide's best. You know it was um big match for me, and you know I was I was shit myself. I was nervous as and. 
you know, and, and I let myself go a little bit as well. And I put on quite a bit of weight as well. And I was like, fuck, do you reckon I, you know, you think I could do this anymore? And I was thinking to myself, you know, what if I get gas within the first minute, which I did, you know, <laughs> but you know, it was a good, it was a good match, you know? So yeah. So, um, yeah, over, over 400 days, Southern cross champion and still, still counting. So yeah. Yeah. Nice. How, how do you find like, like getting gassed in the first minute? Like, what do you do in that situation? Right? Like, oh, like, bro. You're gassing, you're, like sucking in air. Like you just gotta, like, you just gotta pretty much just know, right. You gotta, you gotta push through like, honestly, like, and I think, so I had a match in January as well against Kaz Jordan and I got yeah. gassed really bad in that match too. And it was like, it was hot as it was during summer. It was like, I swear it was like 50 degrees in the venue that we were wrestling at. I was sweating as, and I just kept telling him, throw me out the ring, throw me out the ring. So I could <laughs> breathe, bro. Just so I could that breathe. Bad. And yeah, man. And then I just thought, man, I need to, I need to like, do something. So, you know, I, I started losing a bit of weight and stuff like that. And you know, and like people still get gassed. I think like, I think when you take a, take a bump the wrong way and you get winded and you know, that's, but you, you know, you, you work with your, with your, um, the guy that you're wrestling with and, you work it out, you know, simple as put on a rest hold or get thrown out the ring just so you can get your breath back for another 10 to 20 seconds. And then, then you, then you push through, right? Yeah. hundred percent. I think yeah. Yeah. it's because you're in there with, a, with someone who can take care of you as well and just give you. Yeah, man. Like the it, biggest, so. one of the biggest match other than like Carlita was against like Mikey. So when I wrestled Mikey in July next year, uh, July last year, I was, yeah. I was shitting myself hard out. Like I was like, I seen this guy wrestle and like, I need to like keep up with his pace and he's going to like fuck me up. And I oh, like, he's been gas tank for days as well, bro. And like, man, Mikey, most humble guy ever. Like the most nicest bloke. Like I tell everyone, like, I, he's got this like label of the most intimidating Australian wrestler. And he is like, he's very intimidating. Like when I first like, like seen him, I was like, so scared like i had my fitbit in my heart rate went through the roof i did like <laughs> thirty thousand steps that day because i was just walking up and down up and down and like when i was talking to him like i said my heart rate was through the roof but man he's the nicest guy i have so much respect for mikey and you know and we had a really good match as well you know and and he he worked with me and he and he actually brought himself down to my level and down to my pace and you know, and he talked me through it, and it, yeah, it was it was really good, and it was a great opportunity to to wrestle Mikey as well. You know, I was supposed to wrestle um, Duncan Soler from South Korea, mm -hmm. um, you know, but um, she got COVID and couldn't couldn't come over. So you know, two days before um, the show, you know, Andrew oh. Andrew um, rang me up, and he just said, "Hey, man, like." You know, like who do you who do you want to wrestle this weekend? I was like, well, I want to wrestle. I was like, I'll wrestle whoever. And then I like as a joke, I was like, oh, let me wrestle Mikey. And he's like, oh yeah, now you fucking said that. All right. And then he messaged Mikey and he goes, hey man, do you want to put over this kid? And Mikey's like, yeah man, let's go. And then I was like, fuck. I was like, well, I can't back out of it now, can I? Absolutely right. But yeah, man, so, it was, man, it was a really good match. Really good match. Yeah. Well, I feel like someone like him who's 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 just been everywhere and so seasoned. It's like for yeah, him, to have him in Australia, like I think the Australian industry is very lucky. And I think the business is very lucky because like there's so many yeah, people man. that get to learn from him now. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. And like I said, most nicest bloke ever. The label of him being intimidating, man, he's just the he's just the soft teddy bear. He's probably going to send you a message now. He, he hits, on, he hits hard. He hits hard. Yeah, he hits hard. <laughs> but holy fuck! I remember because I just a lot of guys, a lot of the boys used to say. Yeah, you know, I was talking to um, uh, Julian Ward. I don't know if you know Julian Ward from EPW. Yeah, I and I, Ward. I, I spoke. To, I spoke to him and I said, "Oh, how was your match with Mikey?" Because you know he's had a fair few uh, matches with uh, Mikey, and he goes, "The he goes the one advice I have for you is don't give him your back." I said, "All right." Because obviously he loves his um, Mikey loves doing the back chops. If you like turn your back to him, so that was the one <laughs> oh, thing yeah, I was yeah. thinking about during my match. During my match, I was like, "Don't give my back, don't give my back." Anyway, so while we're talking to match me and Mikey, I just said, "Look, we'll do this to this." Now I just want you hit, want you to hit me one of your famous chops, one, one. But he, yeah, he got me, and then he just like, and then he threw me around the ring, and he was chopping me a couple of times. Fuck, they hurts. 
lay her. And then there was one part of my match, you see, he, he chops me in the chest. I go down and I, I, I remember I was like, don't give my back. And then I like turn around. It's like, oh, I had to face him straight away because I didn't want to get <laughs> chopped across the back. But yeah, he's, his chops hurt, man. That, you know, I was, yeah, like they, but the funny thing is, like, when rest, like, like wrestling fans or people are like, who aren't even into wrestling, they go, oh, yeah, the chop on the chest. How fake is that? I'm like, no. <laughs> No way. No. <laughs> that Man, is the most you know realist what? thing in you know wrestling. What? My young my younger brother, he's like he's a fiend for chops. He loves them. Yeah. Like I know guys that like love chops and they just take them like like it's nothing. Me, you chop me, man. I'm oh man, it hurts a lot. <laughs> But you know what? It's funny, like it's like have you ever been like worked someone who's like yeah, man. Like you go to chop them, and they're just like <laughs> covering up. And oh, yeah, yeah. There was a yeah. There was a. I wrestled when I was over in the Philippines. I like what I was chopping the guy, and then I went to go for the third one, and then he just kind of went, oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> kind of backed like backed away. Yeah, backed away from it. So, but you know, and yeah, you know, I respect for him because chops do hurt. Oh, 100 percent. Like, bro. Like, I could. Like, I no way in the hell I would do it i'd be like yeah nah i'm out <laughs> no nah. i thought like even like oh, who i remember like even uh, my match against matt hater my mm. god his chops were brutal like they yeah. sucked hard as well like yeah they like i think yeah i think chops are probably one of the worst moves to take in uh in wrestling i'll take any bump you know but well, chops, i feel like because the, oh. the chop is like this hitting you as hard as they can really oh yeah and it's funny because like you know when you have a chop off you like try and have like fun with it it's like oh yeah let's let's see who could chop the hardest and then it's always like them that can chop me the hardest because i like bitch out at the end of it it's like oh. <laughs> you, take, you take it easy on them thinking like, yeah oh, take it easy yeah. on you right yeah if i can know and then yeah they go around, no, I, I just it. i just throw a forearm and then like whip them off it's like yeah no more chops That's yeah, done. Yeah, we're done here yeah. oh man like it, it <clears throat> it's funny um you know with with wrestling though like what has been you know like if i was to ask you what is the one match that you would recommend people go and check out of yours that has been like that stands out for you as like your favorite match of all time oh man that's a that's a hard one man if if i was gonna say if i was gonna show a match to show like people that wrestling like wrestling isn't fake or you know that wrestling hurts you know what i mean like wrestling no, no, sport, that, like, something that you're pr like a match of yours that you're proud of it probably like you know i would probably be my match either with mikey or carlito one of them yeah. ones or i did have a match last year in april against um king shahil um so there's a guy you know king shahil he he went from he's come from nhpw he's now training with epw and i had his first match back in in a couple of years and we had a hardcore match and that was a really, really fun match, you know. And, and I took a bump on a shopping trolley, thinking that oh. it would be a good idea. Thinking it would be a good idea, like I took a back body drop on a on a shopping trolley, and yeah. And that was that was a really good match. So you know, I now and then I show people that match as well. But if I wanted someone to watch one of my matches, it would either be yeah against Mikey or or Carlito. That's yeah, yeah. No, I think there were definitely... the, those were the two. Those were the two matches that you know, because you know, uh, I. There was a long, long time, like where I had a lot of self doubt that, you know, was I, you know, did I still belong in like this business? Like, can, should I still wrestle? Can I still do this? Can I still hang with like all these guys, even though I had so much time off? But I think like matches with Mikey and Carlito really like sealed the deal for me, knowing like, oh, maybe I can still do this for a couple more years, you know? So it was probably like a confidence boost, like going in there, yeah, man, and being able to wrestle with like a Mikey and a Carlito and being able to hang with them. And yeah, man, 100%. And I think the respect, like even getting the respect from the guys at, at the back, the guys and girls at the back as well, like, um, you know, helped as well. You know, like, um, that was one thing that I that I wanted to get when I come back after a year and a half was, you know, getting guys people's respect, knowing that, you know, I, I, I do love wrestling, and even though I don't come to training as much, you know, I. You know, I love it just as much as them, and and I try my hardest, and I try and put on the best matches I can every time. Yeah, and you know, for you for this year, what are your like? Obviously, you know, you mentioned you know going back to the Philippines is a huge thing that for you that you want to do. Um, what does the rest of this year look like for you? 
Um, you know, and um, actually, I'm, I'm in the process of, you know, getting the tickle approval to go to Malaysia as well. So off to Malaysia in March as well. So um, Andrew Carter um, Promotions is going to, you know, they helped me get booked over over in Malaysia. So hopefully that's going to be set and sealed pretty soon. And I'm pretty sure that's going to be a show for the 11th of March. It'll be a couple of weeks just before the Philippines. Um, that's for um, Malaysian Pro Wrestling. Um, I think that's the, it's going to be the exact same show where Mikey Nichols will be versing Shakat check out i think for the ambition oh, nice. global title um so yeah so they you know andrew hit me up because hey you know did you want to get a get a booking over in malaysia and i said yeah let's get around it and then so yeah, <laughs> yeah so hopefully hopefully soon we'll get that tick um man this year like i said i just i just want to have fun man like i just want to i want to wrestle different people i want to i want to travel as much as i can as or, you know as much as my wife will let me <laughs> You know, hey man, and she, just, she's probably gonna say, Take me with you, baby, let's go. Yeah, she's probably she's probably watching this right now. It's like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? <laughs> but you know, man, like, and you know, and I've had like, you know, I've had goals of being able to wrestle the names like you know Davis Storm and Damon Slater, Marcus Pitt, all those big game, big, big names. You know what I mean? But um, obviously, like I said, like at the moment, I just just see where the where the wind takes me and. We'll go from there, man. But yeah, hopefully some exciting stuff to happen in 2023. Hopefully I get a you know a chance at the the main title at SCW. Um, you know, the SCW champion, um, Chris Target, you know, he's he's the champion at the moment. Hopefully, you know, um I get I get a chance to have an opportunity to wrestle for the title, hopefully hold it in the next year or two. Who knows, man? You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm a pretty chilled out guy. I just you know, and a lot of promoters will, you know, say like they're pretty easy to, I'm pretty easy to work with, man. Like I'll just do what I'm told, you know, I, I can lose every single match for the next five years. I, I wouldn't care. You know what I mean? So yeah. like I, said, I just want to wrestle, man. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Just want to wrestle and, yeah, man, and get and, and get exposure, get my name out there. Yeah, man. That's, that's what the game's all about. You know? Yeah, bro. That's it. But it is that time of the show. For 60 <laughs> seconds of this. How this works is I've got a bunch of random questions. I'm going to fire at the oh, Philippine well. Dream. He's got 60 seconds to answer as many as he can. Oh, what's this about? What are the questions about, though? Hey, man, they're about just random-ass <laughs> questions, bro. Oh, here they're we no, go. No All right. thinking shit. They're just quick, ready to go. All right? All right, let's go. All right, you ready to start? Let's go. Time starts now. What sport did you play as a kid? Hockey. Which Chris is hotter, Hemsworth, Evans, or Pratt? Hemsworth. Name a gross meal combo that you love that no one else does. Um, toss, salami and rice. Uh, <laughs> what is the shittest gift you have ever received? Nothing. I don't know. Underwear. <laughs> Instagram or Twitter? Instagram. iTunes or Spotify? Spotify. Five star hotel or camping? Five star hotel. What is your guilty pleasure? What is something that you enjoy that you are embarrassed to admit you like? I don't think I could say that on this. <laughs> um, oh, like, damn. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Um, shit. I, I, I don't know. Okay, shit's the answer. Uh, okay, yeah. would you be four foot five or seven foot seven. Seven foot seven. Let's go. If you could ask Vince McMahon one question, what would it be? Book me. Okay. Master Chef or my kitchen rules? <laughs> uh, Master Chef. If you were to release an album, what genre of music would it be? Um, rock. In five minutes' time, you're being shipped out of space. What two personal belongings do you take with you, excluding human beings? Uh, my pocket pussy and... <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have a PS5. Yeah. <laughs> Round of applause for the <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Damn. What a well, you shocked me at that one, bro. I thought this, I this was myself. a nice guy, humble dude. Then you fucking fire off that one right at the end of the podcast. Yeah, let's bro. go. That shit is fucking gold. <laughs> hey, man. Where can everyone find you on social media, bro? Where can you someone get some Philippine Dream merch? Um, so... 
you can follow me on on Instagram. So the Philippine Dream underscore Julio. Um, I also got a Facebook page. You know the Philippine Dream Julio. Uh, shirts. I don't have any links to shirts at, at all. You can just DM me on Instagram or Facebook, um, and then I can send them out to you. Or you know you can come to the next um, SCW show at um, on May twenty seventh. Reborn at uh, Vic Park at Vision Studios. If you're living in Perth, listening to this, and um, I'll have shirts on sale there. Eight by tens some stickers so yeah get around it there you go guys make sure you go and uh check it all out make sure you go give the philippine dream julio garcia a Big follow likes. uh likes heaps of that pound that thumb into the friggin' phone <laughs> but uh guys make sure you check out tomorrow night i've got an episode dropping with rochelle rogue at 8 p.m australian eastern daylight savings time as always, guys, make sure you go and check out our sponsor, Sleeves. Use that promo code MWAPOD. Like, share, subscribe, all that good shit, guys. I love you. I appreciate you. We'll talk to you soon.